So in spite of the fact that this says module 5.3, it really is the introduction to sheet piles, and I'll renumber them someday. Um, so in this one, um, my objective of this would make sure you understand the materials that make up sheet piles and basically how they work. Um, so there's two kinds of sheet piles, hot rolled and cold rolled sections, and it's important you understand the differences between those. Uh, and then um, there's two different cross sections. There's a U and a Z cross section. They're actually straight sheet piles, but we're not, they're not going to be used for any applications that you're interested in. Um, and then um, I've given you some locations to find the sheet pile data. And when we do our design, I'll have, actually have you pick sections for the sheet pile, so you need, may be, you'll need to be able to find those. And I've actually uploaded onto Blackboard some of the information. And it's, it's at least three years old, because I didn't update it this year, but most of that stuff probably hasn't changed. <clears throat> so ultimately, you want to be able to select the appropriate sheet pile for your design. So um, let's talk about cold rolled sections. You, did, did you guys know the difference between hot rolled steel and cold rolled steel? Yes, no? So have you seen those pictures of steel mills and there's this big red thing rolling out of the end of the line and there's stuff forming it? And that's hot form stuff. So almost all of our H sections and W sections that we use are hot form steel. In other words, the steel comes out uh, in, in a factory. It's formed in the shape while it's hot. And those are, uh, that, that's called hot form. Cold form is when you have a sheet, sh sheet steel that comes out, and later you cut it into pieces and bend it and mold it. So that's cold forming. In other words, it's bent to shape when it's cold. So cold form steel is usually much lighter. When you see this light gauge steel construction, that's all cold form steel. And then W sections and H sections, and uh, those are all hot rolled sections. Um, so it's generally light. The, the um, um, section moduli are fairly small. Um, the lightest weights that you can get are made out of 10 to 15 gauge steel. And those are used for like, for not, not for real earth retention projects. Those are for um, really low, small projects. It, that's the kind of gauge of steel that you see. For instance, remember the bend walls we saw that were metal bend walls? It's, that's the kind of gauge you might see in those bend walls. Um, the, the lightweight sections are usually a, uh, five, uh, 857, um, usually 36 KSI, but it can be 33 KSI. You need to check. Most of the, sec most of the sections uh, are made out of a, uh, 328 or a, uh, 572. The uh, 328 is the original one that was used for sheet piling with a, a 39 KSI yield strength. It's still in use. Uh, but it's not at all common. Most of it's now um, 572, which is a grade 50 or a 50 KSI yield strength. Um, you can get it in 1665, but most usually that's not the standard that's produced. Um, if you need, if you were getting to the point where you needed up getting to these higher grades, you're probably just going to go to to a hot rolled section, which we'll talk about in just a minute. There's a lot of stuff in uh, earth retention that's reused. There's a lot of materials that are reused, a lot of H-piles that are reused, especially if it's for temporary shoring and stuff. And so you need to be careful when you're doing the design where this stuff is coming from. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, particularly shoring contractors who will have a material that they've reused and they reuse it again and again and again. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But you, but you might be using 836 steel someplace when it's not even made anymore. So it's pretty important that you understand the, the materials that you're using. And sometimes in this business, you'll be using some material that's basically not manufactured anymore. Um, so the cold rolled steel, uh, all the sheet piles have some sort of interlocking to them. Uh, and, and these are typical examples of cold rolled steel. Here you can see the interlock in this one. And you, and you can tell this is cold rolled because you can see that all the bins have a significant radius on them. So there's some in stock. This is what we call the U section, where the section itself has uh, a, a significant a moment of inertia. The, realize we're, if we're rolling this stuff out of very thin steel, we're not going to get it out of the thickness of the steel. So the, the, all the sheet piling you know, has some depth about this, the, the central axis to give, it this, to give it this moment of inertia. These are what we call Z, what I would call Z piling, because each one of them is kind of in the shape of a Z, if you think about it, so that, so that each section makes half of the U. So if you put the next piece on here, 
you know, it's going to come out like this, and this is going to be the, the center line of the, that's going to be the neutral axis there. Whereas with the U sections, each U makes the complete part of it, and the, the, the um, neutral axis is down the section itself. Um, when you get to the deeper sections, they tend to be, um, we still call this a U section, but they, 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 they tend not to be square like that. And there's a close-up of the connection. So all of the sheet piles have some way that they, they, there's a sliding connection so that when you drive them, you can drive them individually. And I'll show you some pictures of that. And you, you can tell this is a cold rolled section again just by how by the, the bends are smooth and they have fairly large radii. Okay, hot rolling. So hot rolling is a much bigger section, much heavier stuff. Uh, you can get uh, section moduli up to uh, 60 uh, inches cubed per foot. Um, you can actually, they're actually um, hybrid piles where they, people will, will put, a sheet, uh, put a sheet pile with like a pipe pile thing on the end of it or, 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 or uh, they'll weld a, uh, a, a small H section or something to it to get even more, um, sec uh, even stiffer moduli, but uh, this is typical for the, for the sheet pile itself. That's what I just said, you can, you can combine with an H pile, H pile or something to get even a stiffer section. Um, the most common one out there again is, is um, 572, uh, 50 KSI, and again, you can get it in 60 or 65, but that's not common. There are A36 sections still out there that people use, particularly, particularly in places where people reuse shoring a lot, where they, where they drive it and pull it back out and use it for temporary shoring. Um, so you'll still find that in the inventory in some places. Although I said, I've been saying that now for nine years, so maybe it's, eh, yeah, probably not. It's probably still out there. So these are pictures of hot rolled sections. Uh, so you can see they have, uh, you know, you get square corners and stuff in those, and, and you can see that they just look a whole lot more robust. I wish I had a um, something there for scale, but I don't have anything for scale on that one. Here's some in the field, and you see this is a different connection. All the connections they have are all proprietary by the manufacturers. I'll show you some. Um, uh, details of, of, the, of the different uh, connections that they have. But again, they're all, they're all some kind of a connection design so they can join them and they'll slide, slide in and out of each other. There's a, there's a um, this is called a ball and thumb section, I think that's right. Th these ones actually, there's the, you, they actually connect with one another. So if you, if you took this one and flipped it over, the, the thumb piece would fit right in there and it would wrap around like that, and they would join together that way. And you can see the connections are much thicker. Uh, the, thickness of the, 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 the thickness of the material itself is much thicker, and, and the, the, they're just much bigger pieces. And again, this is a U-shaped section, and here's a Z-shaped section. Those are your two basic styles. The other ones that are out there are straight ones, which are used for coffer dams. In fact, I think this is a close-up of straight piles. You're not going to use those for walls. But if you're building a coffer dam, you just basically build it out of a bunch of straight pieces like this, and you can use straight pieces if you're you know, if you're building a circular coffer dam. Uh, but not part of our re earth retention that we're going to talk about. So here's some examples. I forgot whose I pulled this from, but these are some examples of the, the different connection sections. Um, some of them are stronger than others. I mean, the only the most important thing about this to realize is you can't just mix two different kinds of sheet pile, they're not going to connect to each other. So make sure that you're using a single uh, manufacturer sheet pile. Here's a list of uh, a bunch of suppliers. I also have on Blackboard, and during a break, we'll take a quick look. And uh, I, I, I posted, I, I pulled some um, material out of a few of these to give you a, um, a little taste of what's out there so you didn't have to spend, you know, two hours surfing the web to pull stuff down. And I put a little packet together of, of both hot rolled and cold rolled sections with properties and you can download that. But as I say, I, I did that three year, over three years ago, so I, um, probably it's all correct. I doubt that it's changed much, but it's definitely at least three years old. Uh, and here's all the applicable standards um, for the materials.
Now, before we go talk about design, I thought I'd do a little bit about installation. Um, so these pictures come right out of your FHWA manual, but we, the, the sheet pile can be uh, sheet piles can be uh, built either in a fill or a uh, cut uh, in a fill wall or as a cut wall. This is sort of a combo, but it's but it, but it's supposed to illustrate a cut wall. So in this case, we're driving the sheet pile into the ground. Uh, there's a little bit of backfill behind it, and it may or may not have an anchor rod. Today, we're going to talk about cantilever sheet pile walls that don't have anchor systems, and next class, we'll be talking about anchored systems. Uh, and But this is very common that you put it in there, and there's some fill, but then there's a part that's excavated out in front of it. It could also be that you that you put this thing in the in the ground just down to here, and then you excavate it completely out in front of it, and you know, and there's there's no fill at all. That's possible too. Um, and then here's a case where it's a fill wall, where where you you you've done a temporary excavation, then installed your wall, and then you're going to fill behind it. Uh, and again, you 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 may or may not have an anchor rod today. Um, we're not going to we're going to talk about cantilevered walls without anchors. So this is an example of a fill wall system. And again, this also could be that the ground surface was flat or you know, coming up like this. You, there wasn't a temporary excavation, but you installed the piles and you were filling it up. There may or may not be a temporary excavation. So it's used in both those cases. It's also really, really common to have a situation like this one where, where it's a marine environment and this is actually uh, you're, you know, you're, doing, you're, re, you're reclaiming land in a harbor to so put in a to put in some system, and so you're going to drive this stuff through the water, and then do your backfill, and you know eventually it's coming up to the the ground surface, and your and your anchor might be back there. So it's re these are really really common systems to use in marine environments. The most common way to install the piles is with a vibratory hammer. I'll show you one picture of a diesel. I've actually never seen them installed with diesel hammers, but it, it's done. Uh, you can't install the um, cold world section with the diesel hammer, that, that would only be, the only time you'd be using a diesel hammer is when you're using the very largest of the hot rolled sections. So the way a vibratory hammer works is you've got, uh, you've got two motors in here that are usually, usually hydraulic motors. In this case, you've got a motor here and you've got a motor here. And you have eccentric loads here. So this is, this is a, um, this is a, an, eccentric, an eccentric pulley kind of system. So there's a piece of metal in here that has a big eccentric load on it. And then these things counter rotate, so the motors turn these things in opposite directions. And as they, and as they go, as they turn in opposite directions, then of course this thing vibrates up and down. And these things can be really large. In fact, there's a uh, if you go to the APE website, uh, the the company that you see on this one, they've got a thing they called uh, they, have, they they had a big one they called King Kong, and they have, and then they put eight of them together to drive something like a 36 foot diameter uh, steel pipe for a case on someplace, and they've got eight of these same as huge, uh, just absolutely humongous things. So these things can be really, really large. Um, down at the bottom, there's some kind of a clamping mechanism. So right here's a hydraulic ram. Your sheet pile is going to go right in here, and then this just, just grabs a hold of it and squeezes it. Uh, so you can use these for extraction, too. That's one of the nice things about vibratory hammers is that you can grab a hold of the pile, extract it, and then pull up, and you can use them for extraction. And then this is hooked up to some kind of a crane. Here's a picture of, of some sheet piles being driven. So you, here's the, you, can, you can sort of see the crane behind here. And it, it's just set to a set of swing, what do you call it, swinging leads. It's, there's no lead, in fact, there's no leads at all for it. It's just on the cable from the, from the uh, crane. You don't, you don't need any guidance system for it. Um, Here's the one picture I've ever seen, I've, I've ever gotten of a diesel hammer driving sheet piles, and if you'll notice, uh, those, these are um, cold. I'm sorry, hot hot rolled uh, sections. So these are very large sheet pile sections. So that's pretty unusual. Um, so that that'd be a case where you had really really stiff soils and you couldn't drive it with a vibratory hammer. It's pretty unusual. So I want to talk a little bit about the driving process. Uh, and these uh, figures again come out of the FHWA manual. There's, there's three ways of driving, and this is probably the least common or done only for small projects. Um, and this is just called pitch driving, where you're just 
you're just doing your construction this direction. You drive one pile. You, you put the next one up there, you drive that down, you come along, you, you hook the next pile onto that one, and you drive it, and you just keep going down the line. It doesn't give you much control over the placement of the piles, and, and it tends to cause a lot of wandering. If you're looking, in, um, if you're looking at it in a cross-section view, if you're, driving along, if, you're, if you're driving your piles along, and you put the next one in and drive along, and if they start, to, they start to wander off in one direction, it's really hard to keep them lined up. So this is generally the least common method. Um, there's two methods where you drive them um, um, incrementally, I guess you'd say. Uh, the first one's called the panel method. So you, you have some sort of a guidance system uh, on the ground that helps you line up your, your, uh, your uh, sheet piles in the way you want to do them. And you put together an entire, you assemble an entire panel on the ground within, within your guides. And then you drive one into the, the, the you drive the pot one or two piles on one end, and then you come back and you drive one or two piles on the second end, and then you come back in and drive the, the middle piles. And then you move on to the next panel and drive the next panel incrementally. So that's called the, the panel method. So it gives you a better control. Uh, you know that if you can get the two end sets put in properly that you got a lot less uh, worry about whether the middle ones wander around. Um, and the final method, which I've seen a lot, is called the stagger method. And you can do, uh, uh, you can do, this, you can do this either with panels or with, um, you can either do it in the panel or in pitch driving, really. Um, but with the stagger method, what you're doing is you're going to line up your panels. Again, you've got some, this is, this is a cross section here. You've got some kind of a guide uh, to line them up, and they've numbered them here to show you what's going on. And then you come along in this direction, and you drive every other, you drive every other pile, or sometimes every other pair of piles. But you drive them alternately, and and you don't and you don't generally drive them all the way. And then you come back, uh, in, in this sorry, you come back in this direction, and you're going to drive the ones that are high. And then you come back in this direction and drive them that one. You keep going back and forth until you've reached the depth. Oh, if you have problems where you, if you've got hard driving where you're worried about um, maybe uh, losing the connection between your piles, this is good because it gives you less, uh, you're, you're driving the piles uh, a, a shorter distance below the point where there's some um, lateral stability to the piles. Obviously, this takes more time because you're constantly taking your driver off and unhooking it and putting it back on. But it's not really that much time because the, 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 on, on the, um, You're, you're, this thing is all automated. I mean, the, 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 the uh, crane operator has control over the grip. And so all you do is release the, the um, hydraulic ram there, lift it up, move it over to the next one. Somebody guides it on, put it on, and clamp, and away you go. So it's not like there's a lot of setup on top of each pile. It's not like trying to set up a, a, a diesel hammer on top of the piles where it would take quite a while. But it's still got a, it obviously takes more time than just doing, than just doing p pitch driving. Um, but you can imagine if this particular pile wandered off in one direction, you know, if, if, we, if we looked in a cross section in this direction, if one of your piles wandered off like this and then you're trying to drive another one next to it, you know, you could easily get separation at that point. So when, you, if you're, when you're doing the incremental driving uh, through um, stagger driving, you know, if you look at a cross section in this, in this direction, there's only a, if this is the first pile, uh, the next one's only going to be driven some, a little bit below it. So there's less chance for them to wander off. And I think that's it for that one. So any questions about pile types and driving? Let me look real quick at um, In the course document section of Blackboard, um, 
I put a, a section here on pile specification. It has those links that I just showed you, um, and it has some in information about um, anchors and tiles. You should go to this site for sure, the, this um, the seller middle site, and, and download this uh, piling handbook. They have a really nice piling handbook. Um, I've got a hard copy of it. Uh, it's got a lot of really good information along. Uh, along. It's got some design information along with um, the specifications for their piles. It's a, that's a big European uh, supplier, but they've got a really nice handbook, and it's definitely worth downloading. And then I think I also, yeah, and I, and I, and I, I have this one little PDF that's sort of a short collection of uh, some information about um, both cold rolled and hot rolled sections. If it doesn't take too long to download. So I guess it's bigger than I thought. How big is it? Hmm, it's only half a meg. I don't know what's going on. System is slow. So I've given you uh, two suppliers of hot rolled sections, I'm sorry, three suppliers of hot rolled sections and one supplier of cold rolled sections. These aren't necessarily manufacturers. I included uh, their spec sheets. Here's an example, uh, for instance, of how you can combine, a, they've combined a um, W section with a sheet pile to give you a lot higher section modulus. And here's a place where they've combined a pipe pile, they basically welded one of those connectors along the end of a pipe pile, and so now you've got, obviously you get a lot more section modules with that. We're not gonna, well, our design methods would cover for sheet piling, we'll do that, you, you could, they're applicable for any of these. These are just how you would pick the section modules that you need. Those are pretty unusual, but I put those in there because they are unusual. So there's samples from several suppliers in here, so it's a good place to start. Okay? All right, let's stop this.